Is she on? Hi guys! It's your lover, homie, and best friend, Vanity Legale, and we're gonna talk about the trauma, the pain, the agony, the grief that comes with losing a friend. I feel like this is not talked about enough. And not not by like death or nothing like that, but really like a friendship being betrayed by a friend i feel like people don't talk about the effects of that enough so we're gonna talk about it okay here we go so who who i've always been the type of person that's only had one or two friends at a time so that's just my character i'm definitely trying to get out of that now when you start going through healing you just try to trust people and stuff like that so i'm getting out of that but it's just more comfortable because i'm very I wouldn't say attached, but I'm very focused with my friendships. And if I got too many things going on, I don't know, with friends, with people, I need to be able, I will probably say I will never be a person that has a bunch of friends, just if we're being literal, like what a friend is, not an associate, not a somebody you just kick it with, but like a friend friend, I would never just have a bunch of friends. Because to me, being a friend is such a big, not responsibility, but it's a serious thing to me to me my friendships have always gotten me out of very dark places or always helped me because I meet I feel like I meet beautiful people so even before I tell this story I would like to say I'm going to call her Kelsey that's what we going that's what we going with I'm a sorry I'm gonna call her Kelsey and before I even do the video I'm gonna say one the events that happen does not erase the things that we got through together. It doesn't erase how loved I felt. It doesn't erase the friendship before it went sour. Like, it's an experience. It, and at one point, it was a beautiful experience. But I'm gonna kinda <laughs> talk about it because I'm telling you, friendship losses are tough. But this one was super hard for me just because they were like my my family. They was like my sister to me. So, I'm gonna say me and Kelsey met when I was like, 19 ish men at work and stuff and we trauma bonded i didn't realize that until now years and years later but we we trauma bonded it was i think at work i mean a lot of my my friends like people i end up being close with at work hmm. i wonder if y'all do that let me know i don't i don't know it's mm, it's very it's whatever um so we met that way we started going out hanging out just all kind of stuff we would have our our issues with our domestic stuff and we could relate it was like almost dating the same person just in different bodies so we were together every single day from the time we decided we were gonna be friends we were together every single day and if not it would be maybe a, a, every other day but a lot of times it was every single day when we, we switched jobs we ended up working together again it was like really really around each other a lot I ended up moving out of the state or whatever and I hadn't seen her I want to say I'm gonna say it might have been two two years two and a half something like that and again we talk every day now I want y'all to understand that when if when you feel a relationship coming to an end or you feel a, a drifting apart don't ignore that don't ignore because I'm gonna tell you I love loved this person I would have laid and you know what I'm not gonna cry I would have laid my life on the line for her you could not tell me that we would ever not be friends I was convinced death do us part like we used to call each other or we was each other soulmates and stuff and I you know I like girls and stuff but it was never that it was never none it was never that People would ask us, like, y'all are so close. Y'all sure y'all don't like each other? Blah, blah, blah. And it was like, no. It's really like finding somebody, like, your, it was like a sisters. We would always, like, talk to each other and be like, bro, our parents got some explaining to do because we have to be related. So, anyways, I moved down here, and I hadn't seen her in a long time. And I just had a feeling just how time was going. And as I was getting through my, going to therapy, getting through my healing and stuff like that, what used to serve me stopped, like, the trauma bonding, like us being negative, talking to each other, picking, nitpicking, and being snappy and stuff. It just, it started to give me more anxiety. Like, it just, 
and and no shades <laughs> no shades kelsey um i just feel like we were going in different directions like and then we have different things going on like i'm like i genuinely genuinely want to heal like some people really thrive in cast and all this stuff because it makes them feel something i genuinely wanted to heal and stuff like that and it was just those conversations was not it was like oh my gosh like you know it was a lot of stuff it was a lot of stuff going on where it was like you're not fighting for yourself i'm over here fighting for myself but what happened was I started to see a pattern with her and the people she would date that I had never seen before. I had been around a lot of her exes. I was cool with them. Um, I've talked to them before, all that stuff. But then I started to see a shift when I moved where it was like, one, you keep date, dating these people that are kind of broken. And, you know, whatever. But that comes with a lot, which is an indicator of you. Because healthy people attract healthy people. Healthy people want to be with healthy people. So I was actually at a, at a point in my life where it just, nothing was fitting. Like toxic people could try to come to me and whatever and come around, but because of my energy and where I was at and what I was giving out, either I would be like, I'm good, or they wouldn't want to deal with me because it's not fun. And toxic people, I mean, and I have been manipulated before and all that stuff. So when you come to me and I'm healthy and you trying to be toxic, you can't really run that on, like run nothing crazy on me. So I was in that space and she wasn't there. So we were just in different spaces and I remember just sitting in my car and I was like, damn, not that we're not going to be friends, but I was like, I remember telling a few people, a few of my other close people, like, it just feels like it's just not, we're going apart. And when you're kind of drifting apart and you try to force it, nothing but bad things, nothing but bad things. If you have to force somebody in your life, you have to force y'all to fucking get along or you gotta, like, it just feels weird. Listen to your body. I feel like, as a, let me not throw a woman in it. Listen to your intuition or listen to your body. If you, every time you talk to this person, every time your phone rings or they text you, you get anxious or they call you like, damn, I hope they don't st start complaining. Or you know what I'm saying? Like, you get that feeling, you gotta reevaluate it. You gotta reevaluate your relationship. So I remember feeling like that because because I'm like, every time you get with somebody, Every time she got with somebody, her personality changed to almost mirror whoever she was with. And to me, that is frightening. I started to see it and I can't remember if I said something like, or if I was just, because we had always been so supportive to a T where you, she could be going off about, like we couldn't almost not do no wrong in each other's eyes. Or if it was something wrong, or if it's like, I think you're handling this the wrong way, we would at least come up with other things like, hey, I know this and that, but this even you being angry, fuck you lashing out at somebody or doing that wrong before you. This is not good for you. Like, you know what I'm saying? So we used to look out and it was, it, I'm telling you, it was a beautiful thing. But so I started to see that. Okay. And that was a, that would, I mean, that was a big whew, to me. So she came down to visit around New Year's and she brought the person she was dating at the time. And... You know, of course, I'm excited because I haven't seen you in goddamn, I don't know how long, and I used to see you every day. And I think when I left, y'all, I left, when I left my home state or whatever, I left and didn't really say bye to many people. I just got up and I was ready to go because I, I feel like I knew if I did that and did my rounds and stuff, one, it would have been harder. I probably would have been a little depressed or something. I didn't want to go through that. It was like, no, you just got to get up and go. Cool. So, came down here to visit or whatever. And I realized Kelsey was more aggressive. But every time I would kind of say something, it's kind of like, oh, it's almost like, oh, you don't really know me like that no more. Oh, this is just how I am now. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Now, boyfriend, bad body. The energy was just weird. Like, I had talked to her and him on the phone before. And it was just so many shifts. It was like, if the person you, and I get it, but not your personality. I, don't, I guess I, I guess I get it, which is why you need to pick your partners wisely. But, anyways, came down here with him, but I could just we were on the phone and stuff like it was a little bit different. And I'm very protective of my friends. I'm definitely that friend that you know how they tell you don't tell your friends about your relationships and all the bad stuff and blah blah yada yada boom boom boom. You can t I feel like I'm open, but you can tell me, but you can't stop me from not liking them. Like I cannot. I'm just gonna not like them, but I'm not going to be disrespectful in any way. I would only step in, say something potentially if I feel like 
your life is at risk, like you're being harmed or something like that, then we on a different page. But if you want to deal with the bullshit and all that stuff, that's on you, boo. And I'm going to tell you, like, and I would probably not hang out with them stuff, but whatever. Anyways, I have talked to the person, and I was happy for her because she's one of the people, again, she's like my soulmate. You deserve, nobody else deserves happiness. We talked about moving in together as we get older, taking care of each other. If we don't, you know, not in relationships and stuff, like, that was really, like, like my rib. And so, got down here, and she was acting weird, but I also picked up weird vibes from him. Like, very just weird. Like, you know, it's just something, it's just weird, like... It wasn't even that he was really aggressive, but it was just little, like stuff that just wasn't who I had seen for years and years and years. And I'm aware that people change, but it was just like, it was like, it started to mess with the character. Like when the character gets a little, you know, then it's like, I don't know what's going on. So, it's gonna get real weird. So pretty much, you know, every, we turn, it's New Year's. Turn, blew, blew out, okay? Sun up, sun down, blew out, turn. Me and my mind, I'm not thinking nothing because one, I would never let nothing happen to her. She would never let nothing happen to me. So for me, it's like we're safe. Like we've always done that. We always take care of each other even from the time we knew each other, period. We, we turn and stuff like that. First incident happens. I'm asleep, face down on like, so we was all in the room. Me, me, Kelsey, and her, her dude or whatever at the time. And I'm laying down on my stomach. She's laying like on her side or something. And he was like in the room playing a game, I believe. And in the middle of the night, again, turn. In the middle of the night, I feel something like rush up and grab my my behind. Again, Kelsey and I don't do, don't do that. We've never. We were never that friendship. We've never. We don't rub on each other. Like I think I, I gave her a wax. <laughs> I'll say that. What I'm saying is it was never a sexual thing. Like, it just wasn't. So, I was like, what the fuck? And I move, and I see him scatter. Like a goddamn rat. Like, just, just scatter into the other room. So, I'm like, you more to, first of all, more to five. That was number one. That was number one. Get the fuck up out of there. Like, van vanity, why are you still there? No, why are you still there? Like, get, uh, get up and get out. Like, what's going on? But no. So I tell, I tell her and she's like, what? You know, like react like, what the hell? Now, take this into account. She behaved as if she didn't know, right? So she go in the other room with, with her, with dude. We can call him Mike. Uh, ooh. Mm. No, fuck him. Anyways, we go in the room with dude, have a conversation. She comes back out, I guess they come to a consensus. She goes, Oh no, that was me. Like me, that was me who like was rubbing you. Bullshit. You first of all, you were asleep. You didn't move. I nobody. You didn't move. Like what are you talking about? And then if that was the case when I said it, you would have just been like, you would have been like, no, nah, girl, that was me. And that's not what happened. So number one. So there, I think I was in sh not even in shock. I think I was like, okay, maybe I really was like maybe I was tripping because, ooh. <laughs> Because, you know, niggas been drinking and stuff like that. Like, I was like, okay, maybe I, I was tripping. But you got to understand, I think I know this person in and out. I don't care what you're going through. Like, she's going through stuff. She's being aggressive. But it's like, I know you and you would never, I would never, not cover, not cover up for no. Oh, so, we we disregarded. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. That wasn't. And he was like, oh, no, 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 You know, whatever. Cool. Then, another incident happened. We about to go out. My first, mind you, it was, it just was so many instances where it was like, go home because they was in a car, in the car, drinking, smoking, and then it's a lot of stuff that's not, that cannot go on here. We are not in a, listen, it was just some bullshit happening. And when you have things in your, and when you doing things that you know you don't have no business doing in the vicinity, you don't cause more attention to yourself so i'm in my mind i'm like look if we get flicked blah, blah, i'm when i tell you if if i get if we get flicked and get arrested i'm going to have a reason to get arrested i'm going to fight Ooh. Mm. i'm going to fight y'all because it's so fucking irresponsible and she's always been the responsible person so i don't know if maybe she's going through something and she just well she ended up telling me but i don't know if you've been and you're just like, I don't want to be the responsible one no more. And she's always been like this. I'm like, what the hell is going on? 
So, as we go to Linux stuff, I start seeing little things like she's paying for stuff. Or she she's always been boisterous, but I started to realize like she overcompensates for the niggas that she do with. Like the guys she do with, where it's like, oh, he love, like she oversells it. Like, oh, he would never do that to me. Oh, he like my best friend. Oh, he love me so much. He treat, he think I'm a princess, blah, blah, blah. And I realized that there may be an insecurity or whatever. So it was like, whatever. I just started to see things. It's like getting, getting, trying to get, getting out of that trauma bond will help you see stuff because you're seeing it more healthy. The, the chaos and the trauma and the talking about it and the over, like, and not being honest with yourself. It's not, it's like, ugh. Honestly, it's just like, ugh. So I started to see that. And then I'm not going to disclose it because this is somebody and, I mean, might not find out who it is, but I don't want to disclose certain things. But it was certain things that was said to them about their past, a very traumatic thing that happened to them. And it wasn't the same story either. So I'm like, damn, they're lying. And then when I asked, they kind of did this weird cover-up thing. Okay, so that's another that's another day. Then it gets weird again. Like we about to go out and Kelsey's taking a nap on like the pull-out couch thing. Because it was like one of those hotels that has the double doors with the room. Is, you know, and I'm chilling in the in the room and he was also like in the living room at first where the pull-up couch was and came in and the doors was open trying to force feed me liquor and stuff again go home go home why are you still why are you still here when you feel like people weird you probably should evacuate huh <laughs> get out of there so like uh, excuse me excuse me excuse me excuse me i gotta get out of here so he starts to close the doors First of all, I, mean, I don't know you. What are you doing? And two, I don't want my my people, I don't want Kelsey to think that anything is like happening because why are you closing the bro? I, what, are, what are you doing? So he comes in or whatever, he's talking to me. And again, I'm not thinking that because I'm like trusting that she picked a quality person. Why? I don't know. Because not long before that, somebody that she accused of assault and stuff, she was asking me about getting back with them. And in my support, I was just like, listen, you're going to do what you want to do. I'm well, I'm telling you I don't think it's safe and stuff. And if you're going to keep combating me about it and you're going to do it anyway, I just need you to be safe. I don't know why I thought her picker was just A1 steak sauce, but it wasn't. So he's like, it was so like, to this day, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, he was like, yeah, you want to like, it was like he was hinting at, like sex stuff and I'm like because I'm like to me I'm like if you don't spit it out like what is you talking about right now and he's like um you know like kind of hinting at it right okay cool let's just get back because I don't know how to explain it to you I'm like excuse me what you saying or whatever like I'm like first of all we shouldn't be having no conversations and she's not in like if that's what y'all into then that's what y'all into but according to her she's not you know so I'm like whatever but I don't feel comfortable having this conversation at all and she's not present like because I'm trying so hard listen I try really hard to deal with people that I love's people even if they being fucking like weird or something so I'm like trying not to know because I'm like what first of all what is you asking me right so he was hinting at a threesome right and so I'm like ah, I'm good and she's not in here first of all stop stop that let's stop the conversation like don't ask me shit else. Don't say nothing else. We don't need to have this conversation if she's not in the room. Like, I don't I don't feel comfortable doing this. He, he was like, she'll do anything I tell her to do. She'll do anything I say. Okay. So, first of all, what? <laughs> Forget everything that I just said that you're being weird. What if you talk like that for me? As me being her friend, I'm like, first of all, what are you talking about? And me knowing her past and I know how this works. I'm like, first, it sounds controlling. It sounds crazy. Like, what are you talking about? Should she do anything you say? So, that was the next thing. We finally leave because we go out to, like, top golf or whatever. And I pull her to the side in the bathroom. And I'm like, yo, I don't want you to, you know. But I'm just gone. This shit been weird, bro. Like, this shit has been weird. So, I'm like, he just insinuated and asked me, essentially, about having sex and three like being weird she's like amped like she like going off i'm like please don't say nothing now because we're out and 
you know, I don't want shit to be weird because if shit get turned up, you got to understand this ain't my people. And you only known him. She had only been with him by the time when she came down there, like two months. Like, there's no way you're this attached to this person. There's no way you listen, whatever. So I guess she had a conversation. He got mad, blah, blah, blah. He don't, you know, whatever. I think. I don't know. And I was like, and he said that you do whatever he says kind of thing. And she was like, no, what he meant was, girl, shut up. Shut the, shut up. 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 Cause now, now we just sticking up for terrible people. Like, shut up. Shut, shut the fuck, shut up. Like, for real. She's like, no, what he meant was I would do anything for him. And I would. Like, trying to do some Bonnie kind of cute stuff. I'm like, no, no, you cannot. First of all, you wasn't there to, or I think she was like, oh, she tried to tell me she wasn't asleep. She was like, no, I wasn't asleep. I heard everything. And what he, what he meant was, no, he meant what he said. He meant what he said. Like, what are you talking about? He meant, how the fuck are you going to say what he meant? And no, you weren't up. You were not awake. Because had you heard the conversation, unless you are that just stuck on just you let this nigga do whatever, you wouldn't have let that fly. I'm not trying to hear that. So that's that. So no, it is. I'm at that point, I got my own room. Because I'm like, um, no, no, no. I didn't get my own room yet. So that was that. And I'm like, these niggas weird. Go home go home i still didn't go i was i'm so i'm so protected though but i'm like bro go home like just go home so then this is where it gets hectic hectic so i get so drunk or whatever i get naked i have this tendency i've done it before it's not safe i'm telling you now i don't mean i don't drink no more i'm Anyway, so I get, you know, I'm so turned, I get drunk, and I've been emotional because it's New Year's Eve. It was like three people I was supposed to link up with. I ended up cussing people out. My ex was harassing me, trying to say she went to fight me, and she was down here in Georgia or whatever, and it was a lot going on. So, one, I got recorded by her boyfriend, and I run this story by everybody, and people are like, when somebody is naked and drunk, this and that, first of all, Lay the person down, do something. Why are you recording? That's weird. So I was just like, I felt mad uncomfortable. Like, and she's never, she's never handled me that way when I was turned. What the hell is going on? So when she showed me and it was like, they tried to tell me like, oh, you tried to get this off the balcony. We was trying to make sure and you didn't hurt yourself and you fell or you almost fell and this, this and that, all this other stuff. And then some sexual things happen. Um, this is where you get kind of serious. And... I'm going to bring her back full circle because it's some bullshit. So, long story short, you drunk, you trying to have sex with people, blah, blah, blah. She's, he, he, is, from my knowledge, he left the room. We getting to whatever. So, when I talk to her, I'm like, hey, yo, what happened? Like, she was like, no, nothing. I'm cool. Everything's cool. Everybody's good. Everybody was just two turns. Like, everything's cool. Cool. I was very vocal about how uncomfortable I was but after some point when I kept expressing how uncomfortable I was or whatever I feel like she wasn't handling it properly my friend come to me and say that it is say it's like okay this friend is drunk and this one over here you think he's trying to take advantage of you or whatever one we gonna mediate it I'm gonna figure it out and we just gonna part I told you on now two to three occasions where I feel uncomfortable and it's like, oh, no, it almost was like, no, you're seeing it wrong. Or, oh, no, you were drunk or, oh, no, you were this. So you don't know type shit. I get my own room. She has some of my stuff. I, I had some of her stuff, whatever. I'm throwing it. I'm like, fuck this. Now I'm mad as hell. Got my own room. And then when she came in, that's when she sat down. She was like, oh, yeah. Every time I said how uncomfortable I was around this man or every time I said something that he did or something that he said to me, it was like, oh, you were drunk though. Or, oh, you tried to sleep with, with my boyfriend back up <laughs> oh you came on to me oh you tried to do this this and that you was just turned you are my, all of that so every time every time i said something about this man that wasn't desirable that a normal human being if they had done something to your friend you are gonna break up with them you're gonna not be with them and honestly i feel like that's not what she wanted to do so whatever so then i get home and we do talk and i'm still talking about because i'm like no like i don't feel comfortable like I just don't feel comfortable. Like, I don't know. They sent me the video of me being naked. I'm like, who the fuck recorded this? The nigga. Y'all, the video wasn't even the full video. They sent me like a partial. So I'm like, so send the whole fucking video type shit. Oh, this is the part 
um, trigger warning. She tried to say that I assaulted her. Like, like I assaulted her. She tried to say that I assaulted her. And when I tell y'all my was, first of all, I was angry. But two, I was broke. Because what you have to understand is when I'm turned to, I don't know about other people, but I'm black, I just passed out. Like, why is it every single time I say something, she just, the extremes got higher and higher and higher and higher. I brought up how she, I figured out how she fabricated stories and over exaggerated certain parts of her trauma. And then it was, then it was, oh, I don't, I didn't tell you everything. I didn't tell you this part and this part and all this other stuff. I just realized she wasn't who I thought or, or I don't know. And so after that, I was like, oh, bet. But I want to let you know that, hey, I don't give a fuck who you are. If I feel like you sexually assaulted me, I would have whooped your ass. I would have beat the shit out of you. So I'm like, okay, this is new information. I don't No. But either way, you you accuse somebody of that is very fucking serious. So, okay, so I went through y'all, I would cry, I went through a lot with that. And that was where I cut it off. Cause I'm like, so since I said that your boyfriend was inappropriate with me verbally, then touched me, all that stuff, now I'm the one. Me, me, after days of you literally telling me you was just drunk, you was just passed out, blah, 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 like none of this. I'm telling you, if that happens, y'all, come on. The first time I tell you, you was wilding, you tried to assault me, you was trying to fuck, you were trying to do this, you trying, it's not going to come up later. Like, I didn't fucking, what the fuck is you talking about? Fuck are you talking about? So that happens, we don't talk for a while. I express myself, they're not together. I talked to her recently because I know what I did and did not do. I know that. However, I needed to hear it. Like, you were like my sister. I need to know. So guess what? The person not together, she was like, I found out he was mean and this and that. He done did some, done did some crazy shit. She's like, I didn't know. Now it was she wasn't on her meds. She had some mental or whatever. So she wasn't on her meds. And I'm like, okay, fuck all that. Say it right now because I need you to say it like you felt violated and she just she told y'all she told me no She was like no, I'm into girls. She's not really into girls and she tried to say that because I ate her coochie type shit like and it was just like okay I just we was drunk and I just let you do it. That's not that's not full assault Like what are you talking about? I allowed you to do it just because we was drunk, but it's just that I don't like, you know, I don't really like girls this and that, and you was going da 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 da. So I was just like, whatever. I'm like, what? That is not said. That's not said. That is called you. I don't know what the fuck that's, but I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's 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 like that's me like your body count when you don't want to claim a body. Y'all still fuck, but when you don't want to claim a body, you like, oh, but oh, you, hmm, we just kind of. It's like that, like. Bro, don't you that's that shit ripped my heart apart that's like in, in instances where we had these situations where somebody um you have sex with somebody and then after they like damn and they just they just feel like you were a waste of a body whatever just for for just so you can kind of understand like say you had and it was whack so you was like damn but to turn around and accuse them of sexual assault because it was whack is lame as hell excuse me that's lame as fuck that's flawed as fuck. That's lame as fuck. I don't know how else to put it. Like, that's terrible. Like, what? That's some bullshit. So, and I made sure I was like, no, we need to talk about this and that. I never got an, I didn't get an apology or nothing. Nothing. I didn't get an apology like, yeah, I wasn't seen it straight. I was on my mess. This is and that. And this happened. And I figured out who he was. And I apologize. I apologize for trying to paint you out to be. Like, like you, you know, so like I, like I didn't get n none of, like none of that. Like, and it was like she just wanted to gloss over and have the hour long conversations, talk about life and events, and just connect. Cause chemistry is chem, like chemistry, and that that shit, that that ending of that relationship broke my fucking heart. It caused an issue in the relationship I was in after that. How I handled, I my heart was so fucking broken because one. I knew. I was like, I know why you're shifting like this because of this person. Two, I done found out some stuff that I just I knew not to be real. And three, all because you don't want to be alone or don't want to be lonely. You're accusing me of the very thing I'm accusing your boyfriend of. That's some foul ass shit. Like we just needed to separate and take some time apart. Then yeah, but don't. No, that's a that's a. I'm hot. I'm getting. I 
I'm not gonna cry because I know who I am. I know my heart. I know. I know. And you was a weird ass nigga from the start. You was with a weird ass nigga, period. And then you saw it. So now since you saw it and y'all not together, now we have a conversation. It's like, no, I didn't feel like that. It was literally just, you know, it's pretty much like I don't really deal with girls, but it, so it was like, oh, it's a thing. But I was just like, whatever. I didn't really care. What the fuck? So you don't think you owe me an, a, a fucking apology or something and you think we about to just be friends? So I'm like, in my arm, just don't worry about it. That's my thing. I'm like, don't worry about it. It's no accountability there. It was nothing. Nothing. Because I almost fell in that trap like, okay, people do say they make mistakes. They went on their miss. F*** that. F*** that. F*** that. F*** that. F*** that. F*** that. Because she probably said, even after the incident, it was like, you were so up and down. Yes. I apologize for being so goddamn drunk. Yes, that's me. I'm a, I, I, that's just me. There's always, I don't say it's all faults on all sides, but if I feel like there was any way that I was at fault, just because I was drunk and I might've been falling out, this is not equate with your boyfriend fondling or a sexually assaulting somebody. It's not on the same fucking level. And it got used against me. It was like, oh, since you don't remember, I'm gonna fill in the gaps for you like this. But I started to kind of, you know how you get back into your rhythm and you talk through the, and you start talking to people. I'm like, well, even if was that, and they like, no, hell no, you shouldn't have got recorded. This shouldn't happen. That don't sound right. This is some bullshit, that, that, that. And then it still starts to come back to me. And so yeah, I talked to her later, but the fact she came back and it was, Pretty much saying, nah, I didn't, but didn't want to take no accountability. Didn't say, hey, this happened, this happened, this happened. Even if you genuinely was like, I thought I, I was the one that did it because we was laying together. Or I thought this person was a good person. I was drunk. I was in the right mind. Nobody was in the right mind. So I was confused. And I felt this way. Then I didn't. Like, at least, like, I understand. And maybe we still wouldn't have been, like, super close. But the fact that it's, like, you're admitting. <laughs> you're admitting that I did not do that. But you're not, you're not apologizing or nothing. That shit broke my heart. And the whole point was that friendships, any of friendships can be, because I grieved. I grieved so, so hard because now I be chilling. What's a friend? <laughs> I'm in a space now because I've done healing where I'm open to it. But I just, it's like, I want that connection. But at the same time, it's like, stay away from me. Because that's some weird, that's some weird ass shit to go through. And then a person come around. It's like, oh, well, I just want to know my meds. That's why. Okay. Let's, let's give you the benefit of the doubt and you wasn't on your mental meds. And, okay. But now, now in hindsight, you realize you weren't on your meds. Therefore, you need to clear this shit up. And it's not even like she need to clear it up because I'm talking about it. It's not like Kelsey needs to clear it up with the world because it's not like she came out and said nothing crazy. It was that you need to clear that shit up with me. You care about me. If you love me, you need to clear that shit up with me. Especially if you're trying to call me and talk you want to we want to be like cool and stuff you we need to like clear that shit up but i realized like i i don't know if i i couldn't really build that relationship back because i can't trust you if i if my if i feel like my safety is compromised with you that's it it's a couple things like if i you i don't like liars and shit either but it's like you know if you're being dishonest because you were scared to do this and you didn't want to tell me you hid something from me but it was about your health now whatever but when my safety gets compromised and I trust I trusted that girl with my life. That's when we have a problem. You going on, you was going all the back for him then. But now y'all broken up and it's like, oh, I saw his true colors. Now it's like, no, yeah, I know. Uh, there wasn't that. So you were protecting him. And that's what it was. And I knew that's what it was. And then the stories, it was just every time I was like, no, this happened, this happened. It was always got more extreme. It went from, oh, you was drunk and this and that. And I, oh, this and that. Did it. Boom. You did this to me. Like, it was like what the fuck so yeah that was pretty that was pretty tough oh that's what because if you question yourself like even if it was like okay if we 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 you know <laughs> messed around or whatever and even if again how we have situations where people feel uncomfortable with don't say that or or whatever i was still in my head like okay i know i did not i know i didn't do that however if you felt uncomfortable in any way, like, I was beating myself. That shit was eating me up. And I've talked to therapists, I've talked to people, and I ran down. I told the truth about everything, my condition, how I acted, if I was drunk, if I was high, what I do remember, what I did remember. And running it down, every single person was like, no, that's some bullshit. One, it sounded like some bullshit. This don't match this. That's what happened. Yes, it was coming. And I never painted it out to nobody. I When I went and retold people or told people what happened, my people, 
um, my people, therapists, unbiased people and stuff, I never made it seem like, oh, she was wrong, him, him, him. I told my, my stuff too. I told, I was acting like this or I might have did this and this might have happened. And say worst case scenario, I did try to have sex with your boyfriend. That's not a reason to then say I saw, you know what I'm saying? It was just, it was crazy. So one, be vigilant out here. Um, I would say get to know people, but I knew it for years. You got to be vi uh, vigilant. Build love bonds instead of trauma bonds. Trauma bonds never quite end well. I would say our spirits were in line. We were very good to each other prior to that. We talked to each other good. We didn't really, we never didn't call each other our name. We never fought. We would never, I would have never imagined putting my hands on her or vice versa. But unless y'all are growing in the same direction, like, okay, start as a trauma bond. Like, it wasn't a trauma bond like, we caused each other's trauma, so that's good. So it wasn't a toxic thing. It wasn't necessarily a toxic relationship. It was just we bonded over our trauma. And so I encourage y'all to have love bonds. If y'all want me to do a video on love bonds versus trauma bonds or whatever, let me know. But y'all be safe out here. When y'all start to get the feeling, like, seriously, when you start to get negative, nasty feelings just from hearing from a person or being in somebody's presence or something, don't ignore that. Don't ignore. I'm not saying you gotta throw it out all the way, cause you might you might be the one that needs some healing. You might be seeing things through your your trauma lenses. So I'm not saying that, but I'm saying don't ignore it. What I will say is, everything happens for a reason. Because I almost moved in with this person, and she wanted to move in with her boyfriend. So I almost moved in with the person and everything. And it was a very tough fall on your face moment. I was like, I don't know. It was like, I kind of showed you that this is just not a part of your path right now and you're not really paying attention. So, boom, I know how to get you up out of it. God does that to me. I don't know what God does to y'all and the universe does to y'all, but it's like, okay, before this get real ugly, I'm about to show you like, and it was shown to me. So it was a blessing because I was about to move back home to live with the person and imagine if we was living with that person or just somebody else and your personality is always changing with everybody that you're dating. So it was a blessing in disguise. I'm glad that we had that time. I could sit and I was talking to, I've talked to other people and my therapist was saying like, hey, you, she should have just came by herself. And that's true. But at the same time, it happened for a reason. It, ha it's, it was in divine order. It happened for a reason. It just goes to show that you got yourself. I'm not, don't be scared of, mm, have discernment have discernment when you when you get into relationships with people even if they're good people good hearts you have to understand that people can be very complex if you're dealing with somebody that has these childhood traumas and that really bother them you don't know until you get to know them but when you have a person that needs a lot of healing done you can also get hurt by mistake you can get hurt in the process because they're not healed so try to excuse me first of all work on yourself heal yourself be around healed people chaos and all that stuff everybody think toxic and chaos and try all that stuff is like cute and fun because it because it, it gives you some kind of rush mate i don't know but start healing i promise y'all is much better but yeah don't underestimate the effect these friendships and the ending of them can have my friendships have always been the most painful to lose not relationships maybe one relationship i had but other than that it's been the friendships realize and I say this, and I don't want to sound like pessimistic or cynical, you don't ever 100% know a person. And by standards, we change. Every, I mean, I I might be somewhat the same now as I, you know, in 10 years, but in 10 years, I literally, my personality, like everything could just be whew, whew. Learn how to have healthy attachments or just understand that the time that we spend with people are experiences and Make sure you have boundaries and stuff so that when that line is crossed, no matter who it is, family, friend, foe, I don't care that you can be like, okay, I'm not looking at this through what I love you, through whatever. This is my limit. And you need to have those limits with every, you need to have a baseline of limits with everybody, no matter who they are. I would say maybe unless it's your kid, like young kids. But other than that, you need a baseline. We ignore stuff because... It's like, that's my friend. And we let people get away. You don't do that, y'all. Just don't do that. Anyways, that is, that's who. I don't know how I got that out. That's crazy. Um, if y'all had an experience, I, I hope y'all didn't have an experience like, cause, like mine with that kind of stuff. But if you had an experience with a friend for years and stuff, like I want to hear about it. Let me know like about your 
friend breakup that was like not great <laughs> let me know about y'all friend breakups i would love to know um the story so make sure y'all go ahead y'all know come on we gonna do it you know you ding that bell throw me in the act uh hit the bell and all that good stuff so i can be in the algorithm that's it again let me know if you want me to do a love love and trauma bond video or whatever one story time at a time oh that was a that was a tough one that was a tough one. But yeah, I will see y'all later. Remember that y'all create y'all own narrative. So yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.